I am now uh, finally, you know, reporting to you from a country that chances are, well, maybe 1% of the people watching this has ever heard of. This is a country that actually has two names. Oh yeah, by the way, I uh, took my cast off, so good news there. But um, there's uh, two names for this country. Westerners refer to it as East Timor, but the people in this part of the world, and especially the locals here, call this country Timor-Leste. This is Timor-Leste, otherwise known as East Timor. It's Asia's single newest nation, and it is beautiful. With easy access to both Bali, Indonesia, and Darwin, Australia, it makes for an excellent side trip if you find yourself in either one of those locations and want to get away from the crowds, as it's not a place that's frequently visited by foreigners. And it's also quite unique. Portuguese is the official language, Catholicism the official religion, and that's not to mention the very complex ethnicity in the bloodline of the Timorese people. A little background on uh, Timor-Leste. The locals are really a mix of so many different races. Um, many people believe that the first people to inhabit the island were uh, kind of a combination of like Melanesian and uh, like Aboriginal uh, tribes from uh, Australia because actually Australia is pretty close to here. Uh, but today, you know, they are a mix of Pacific Islander, Indo-Malay, Chinese, again, um, Aboriginal, and just like a number of different races here. So it's very, very, very diverse. Even the uh, Pacific Islander tribes, there's a number of them that play a role in the uh, genealogy of the local people. Uh, basically, the first ones to actually settle in uh, this island, they inhabited the whole island here, uh, and I'll get to that in a second, were the Portuguese. So they settled here first. They colonized, and then the Dutch came. Now the Dutch are the ones that colonized uh, Indonesia. Ooh, the sun's behind the clouds. That kind of makes for a nice... Uh, Anyway, the, the Dutch were the ones that colonized Indonesia. So now we had the Dutch, we had the Portuguese, we had the, uh, the indigenous tribes, and then Indonesia gained their independence in 1945, and Indonesia actually invaded this island in 1975. And nobody really did anything about it. In fact, he, uh, the president of Indonesia at the time you know, he even kind of talked about it with uh, U.S. President Ford, and he kind of said, you know, I'm not going to stop you. Uh, and so that turned into a lot of conflict, uh, a conflict that resulted in about 100,000 deaths, uh, 20,000 of which were actual killings, with the remaining 81,000 or so uh, coming from disease and famine and all of that. And the best way to get an understanding of its conflict-filled history is by visiting the Museum of the Resistance and Archives. Um, before we go inside, I'm going to show you a lot of stuff. Uh, they don't want people, you know, filming or doing any kind of picture taking or anything like that. So I'm not going to be talking while I'm inside. So just bear with me on that.
And of course, you can always pause it if uh, you see something that stands out. When the Indonesians invaded the island, that's when things got really, really bloody. And just like, you know, Algeria or, or Armenia, you know, you go into a museum and you realize just how bloody things really got and it makes you appreciate the time and place that you live in. His hand is pretty much in the same shape as mine. very straightforward with how uh, old these people were. They look really young. Of course, some things are translated, some things are not. So I noticed that these all have the same date on them. So I'm assuming that this was like a mass killing or something like that. November 12, 1991. So now that we've gotten through Timor Leste's bloody history, it's time to get a glimpse of this half island nation's local life as it stands today. This is as you're kind of leaving Dili to uh, walk towards the uh, Cristo Rey uh, statue, which is kind of on the northeast uh, point of the Dili area. And uh, you come across this place, and it's actually a really nice place to uh, you know get a good, you know, pleasant glimpse of the local life. So, you know, this is the local farmers market where people basically come from all over the country to kind of you know sell whatever they can here and you get a lot of I mean I'm surprised that it actually so much can actually grow within the country because it's really not that big it only takes up about half the island But yeah, I mean, that is something where, uh, you know, you do need to look at the situation and realize that, look, I mean, this is a very, this is not only a developing country, it's also a pretty poor country and it's struggling economically. So, you know, you do see things like that where, you know, people come to this area from all over, they scrape together whatever they can, sell whatever they can, just to make, you know, an extra couple of bucks uh, to get by. I've heard... I haven't had this confirmed, but I've heard that Timor Leste actually has what we call a hungry season, which is, you know, because, you know, we have the two seasons, you know, wet and dry. Uh, they don't really get enough rainfall to support a lot of their crops. So I'm not exactly sure what goes into it uh, or what it's called, but uh, basically 
to get by, a lot of people will actually make something like a half-assed unleavened uh, bread made from like, you know, palm tree bark and flour. Uh, that's kind of like how they'll get by in some of these hungrier, like I said, the, the hungry season. So this is more like the waterfront park where, you know, you see a lot of, uh, you know, people working out here. There's like a little, you know, Nazi goring kind of, you know, thing, or a Mia goring with a little bit of fish that they're selling right there. Hey, buddy. And then this is where a lot of people will go out and try to catch whatever they can for fish. Very colorful fish that they sell here in the local markets. But I mean, this is basically the waterfront park right here where you know, people come and hang out, the kids come and play and they go swimming. And the locals, by the way, are actually very friendly. Uh, you know, like I said, you know, Portuguese is the official language. Uh, Tetum is also spoken here. And then they also uh, speak Indonesian sometimes and they are trying to learn English. So I have a lot, I had a lot of people today actually, you know, approach me and, you know, try to, uh, you know, try to make conversation with me in English. Of course, I'm always happy to help. Um, hello. My point exactly. So, again, a lot more of the same thing. By the way, they use the US dollar here. Uh, there's actually a number of countries that do use the US dollar other than uh, the U.S. I mean, I, this isn't the first time for me. I've also been to El Salvador, which uses the U.S. dollar, and uh, I mean, it's a pretty stable currency, so people just, you know, they use it. Uh, but anyway, you know, that's kind of uh, dealy in a nutshell. So, finish this off with, you know, sun setting over the west side. So that, my friends, is dealy. But quite honestly, the most worthwhile experience in the Dealey area is worthy of its own clip. So make sure you check out my clip for the climb up to Cristo Rey, the main highlight of Timor Leste. Until then, travel on, my friends. See you then, and thank you for watching.